Lesson 83 in the Jazz Violin Series. Now, for the next few videos, I'm going to talk about what it's like to be actually on a gig. A gig is a, a playing engagement. It's the hip term for it. I got a gig, man. I got a job, some people call it. Let's call it. But usually it's gig. And uh, this is pretty prevalent in our culture. It's not a big deal. Uh, you should have heard that word before. G-I-G, -G, gig. And um, one of the biggest things I have struggled with over the years um, is what is the gig for? Is it just for you to make money? Or is it just is for, for you to express your highest art, artistic integrity? Um, and I struggle with this sometimes because sometimes the gigs are just for the money, to be honest. And I did way too many of those and felt like a whore. I did. And kind of lose your soul. So how do you balance it out? I mean, service gigs versus art, artistic gigs. I've been blessed to do a lot of artistic gigs where you're doing your own thing and people are coming to hear you do your thing. That's pretty cool. Um, but on a spiritual level, that's not all there is. And, you know, you can serve people too. And ultimately, the two should be completely mixed. You should be doing your thing and serving people. But what about it when the gig is just for the money? It's a wedding or it's a uh, lounge gig, you know, where people aren't paying attention to you. You're just, you're just background patter to give the restaurant a, a good, you know, vibe or something. It's okay. I mean, in the jazz world, I don't feel too much like a whore because... You're at least improvising and doing your own thing. Even if somebody is requesting some song, you could care less about playing. Um, at least you get to improvise. And that softens it for me. When I played in the, the Gypsy Jazz group, Bob Beak, um, it's not easy to have a successful recording career and be on tour all the time and make all that stuff happen. Bob Beak had some um, positive gains as, as far as a career went. Um, we were doing maybe a couple hundred dates a year for, for a while there. And, but the gigs weren't super high paying and we weren't making enough money to live on alone by that. So that's where a lot of bands get stuck. And we had some success. We are on, you know, the NPR, the world show. We were, we hired an independent record promoter and tried to promote our, our record and got up to 51 on the top 50 chart. We just didn't quite make it. <laughs> um, um, so, so we were, were making okay money, but we weren't making enough money to live on. We all had to have separate jobs that were flexible so we could go on the road when we needed to. And one guy was a real estate agent. I was a, a teaching guy. I, you know, I drove school bus part-time, different things um, to supplement. So it's a hard spot to be in. So what we do sometimes, we'd, we'd get good paying gigs. We'd do weddings. Now, a wedding is obviously not the artistic the highest thing. So it's like, oh man, a wedding? Okay. Thankfully in that band, people usually hired that kind of group because they wanted to hear our sound. So it wasn't so bad. Um, I have also been in a diehard wedding band before too. It was the only band I was ever fired at from actually. <laughs> it's another story. <laughs> and it wasn't fired because I was doing a bad job. It was fired because I was I was so bored. <laughs> the guy said, well, you didn't seem like you're into it. It's like, duh, I wasn't. <laughs> but I was doing a good job. They didn't fire me for doing a bad job. Anyways, I was a bass player in, in a wedding band. But um, it just gagged me. Man, if I have to play this Madonna song one more time and go behind my amp and puke, you know, I just was not into it. And uh, having had the taste of blood, like a <laughs> dog, the taste of artistry. So when Babique did these wedding gigs, it was sort of okay because we got to do our thing. Just people weren't there to listen to our thing. It wasn't like a concert. So I was like, eh, it's okay, you know. I used it as a as a excuse to practice being in the zone and not thinking, and so it's all okay. But at one point in in you know our career path, I decided to move out of Buffalo and down to Florida and uh, retire from snow shoveling. And I told guys, if you want to stay here to do weddings, have at it, hire a sub. If you want to go on tour, uh, call me. And so we made those choices. Um, and the band lasted a couple more years, and then we decided to call it quits for personal differences. But um, it was a good group. Check it out. So I've struggled with all these things. I've done gigs just for the money and kind of hated it. I've tried to balance it out when I'm doing things because I need money and also because I'm trying to be an artist at the same time in practice. And I've done gigs that are only for, you know, for the artistry's sake, like playing Newport Jazz Fest or playing some other festivals this is pretty cool. So it's up to you to find those spots and be comfortable in kind of a spiritual quest of your own. I advise you to use the gig if it's not in your highest uh, ideal to at least practice your ideals without being too snooty about it and still serving people. Um, it's a tough balance and I'd never got it perfect myself. Um, still struggle with sometimes 
And um, this is why a little bit lately I play less because I don't want to just do gigs for the money. I'd rather do something else for money. This keeps my brain and soul clear. So it's up to you to find your balance. I wish you luck.